everyone, I'm Evelyn. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having an amazing day. So today we're doing something I've been promising to do for a little while. So I'm going to do my best to do a floor plan tutorial today, but not in the typical let's sit down and do a floor plan and then I take you guys through what I do while I do it. I instead, because I feel like that's very situational to the specific build that you're doing a, a floor plan for. Instead, I have gathered or found five houses that are a little bit different from each other. We have a more like modern boxy kind of house. There's a modern family or a modern farmhouse as well. We have something that's a little bit more like a cottage farm. There is also something more traditionally suburban, maybe with a... Uh, a, a bit of a rustic touch to it, but still. And also a uh, farmhouse that's not a farm and not super modern. So we have like five different houses. I want to take you through what I've done for the floor plan in every one of them. And hopefully that way I can get like some thoughts out there for you that'll be helpful if you're struggling with floor plans. So that's what I want to do. We're going to start out with uh, the boxy one because why not? Why not start with what's technically supposed to be the hardest floor plan to do? And I'll tell you why. So with boxy houses, you... Okay, this is not as boxy as it could have been. You see there's a square right here. That's fine. That's what I mean with a box, like just a square. So like this. That's a box. We do have a few corners here and there that does help a little bit, but the upstairs though is basically just a square or a rectangle in this case. So what I do normally when I do floor plans, you always have to keep the upper floor and the lower floor in mind at the same time, but I actually prefer to start, especially if you have a second floor that's basically just a square, I prefer to do the, the upper floor plan first. And in reality, when it comes to a boxy house like this, you really just have to place down a wall and then take it from there. So I know that we have bedrooms on the second floor and that means there has to be a bathroom as well. You don't want your sims walking up and down the stairs all the time. If they suddenly gotta pee, you know, they get that awkward walk. You want to make sure that there's a bathroom so they can do their business as fast as possible. The bedrooms in this house is also, or they're very small, at least these two. It's also, in general, a very small house, I would say, but we are going to be looking at some bigger houses as well. So for a modern house like this, I think it's nice to keep a lot of it open plan, which means that we don't necessarily need like a floor plan per se. We do have a closed off area over here where there's a bathroom. I like to place bathrooms next to the front door. I've had my own... How do you phrase this? near catastrophes coming home from school and having to pee so bad so <laughs> I really want to make sure that that does not happen to my sims so I always end up placing or at least if I can the goal is often to place down a bathroom right next to the front door so I knew that that was going to be there and then it's basically just shaping everything after doing that I see we got this is not actually a part of the floor plan per se but this is basically the whole like living room area is down here center around the TV. But yes, boxy houses are definitely the hardest ones to floor plan. You basically have to place down a wall and then experiment from there. If you don't like what you're doing, it's okay to take down the wall and start over. I've done that many, many times. But I remember this specific house, the floor plan on the second floor, being built around wanting the staircase to be in the corner of the house so it didn't take up too much space. And then there also being a bathroom right here. So sticking to the more modern builds, we're gonna be looking at a larger modern farmhouse. I think this is built on a 40 by 40 actually. It looks quite square. So this, we have a front door that is not entirely in the middle of the house actually. It's sort of off to the right side. We also have a garage over here. With a house like this, I don't mind just making the garage a garage. Sometimes I turn them into bedrooms or whatever, like a kind of cheese that it's a garage. So it looks like a garage from the outside. But once you move in inside the house, it's actually a proper room instead of just a garage. This is a big house though. So I decided to just stick to the garage. Second floor is surprisingly not that big, but we also have quite an open space right here. I guess I figure since we have such a large downstairs, it would be fine to just have it open right here, but this does actually take up a lot of space because like you could place a whole new room right here. But for a house like this, where we do have 
a little bit of shape to it. There's a bump out right here. The square over here also kind of, or rectangle, that's also a box in itself. It's probably easier to show on the, on the ground floor. I like to follow the lines in the corners of the house. So right over here is a good example of that. We have the whole like, there's a corner of the build right here and then another corner down here, which means that it feels natural to cut off this area of the house. And then because there's also a corner right there, you cut it off again. I'm gonna delete everything in the house so it'll be a little bit easier to see what I mean. It's the same down here as well, the corner or one line. I see I've been playing a little bit of, or I've added extra squares right there because <laughs> these aren't actually aligned, these two walls. So to kind of make up for that, I've added an extra square right there. That's fine, I don't mind doing that. I know it's not for everyone, but it also adds a little bit of fun to like, a kitchen shape for example if you do add a square in the corner but also right here so I have probably at first placed down the hallway space so I could place down the staircase done the upstairs first because if you got the upstairs done you can kind of just take it from there if you know where you want the staircase to be it's so much easier to build around that on the ground floor so get that upstairs done first and it's a lot easier from there at least that's how I feel and then because we're also it's a rather large house so you're not gonna end up with windows in every single room because you don't have any windows in the middle of the house I like to turn that into either hallway space which is what this is or bathrooms which is what that is another hallway down here. This is basically a closet space. And then this over here is the kitchen. So I know it's not for everyone, again, to, uh, this is just personal preference, but I know it's not for everyone to not have windows in the kitchen, but I don't mind, especially when we have like an open archway right here leading to a lot of windows. I think I accidentally deleted some of them right there, so just ignore that. <laughs> so there's plenty of light coming into the kitchen from the windows that used to be here or from the door. I think it was a sliding door or something. But my main tip when it comes to making floor plans, and you'll hear me saying this a couple of times throughout the video, is really to follow the lines in the corners of the house because it just adds like a natural, a natural flow to the floor plan kind of. But also for something like this, where you have a hallway coming through the door, you have a hallway, hallway right here. And this also has to do with the way that the house is furnished, but you want like a natural path leading through the house. I hope my camera, or not camera, but I hope my studio, my recording program is actually picking up on my mouse right now. But um, you want like a natural flow for your sims to walk through the house, especially with a house this big. For smaller houses, it's fine when everything is crammed a little bit together, but for a, a big house like this, it's okay if everything is sort of spacious. So don't be afraid to add hallway space in bigger houses. And personally, don't care about windows and bathrooms. I'm just gonna pretend like there's good ventilation. Also don't really care about windows in kitchens. Again, we're just gonna pretend like there's good ventilation, but it's really up to you. If that's not what you like, if you like big windows in your kitchens, then don't. Obviously don't. But also this is a bit of a more modern kind of house as well. So I've definitely kept it with the open concept almost. The rooms are closed off from each other, but I have added the, uh, what are these called again? I don't think they're called spandrels. Thank you. I have added them as like uh, an open archway because the ones that we have weren't wide enough. So I'm, I made my own, but yes. So that's the modern farmhouse. But let's move on to a bit of a smaller build and also something that's not modern as well. I believe this is technically built on either a 50 by 40 or a 50 by 50, but the house itself is actually not that big. We also have something interesting going on here because I am doing this sort of dormer window sort of situation, or, or I wouldn't say these are necessarily dormer windows, but we have a, a roof situation going on that's a little bit different from the other two houses. So let's see. I think this is actually, again, a very good example of following the lines in the corners of the build because I've done it right here and then closed it off by following the line from over here and then close it off right here. So that makes up two rooms in itself, right? I usually will place the staircase leading to the upstairs in the hallway so your sins can easily get to it from the front door. I've done that here too. And then for the upstairs, I'm okay with hallway space. Don't be afraid to add hallways. 
If you have spaces that don't have windows, don't be afraid to add hallways or like a powder room maybe, or maybe both. So we have a little bit of that going on here with the, with the hallway space. And then the rest are basically like small boxes that just fits with the, or that fit with the lines of the house. Even if the bedrooms turn out to be a little bit spacious, which is not necessarily my taste all the time. Like I would easily do like this and then suddenly you have two bedrooms. <laughs> but for this house, I decided to go with bigger bedrooms. But everything is just kind of like cut off by following the lines of the house. And then for the downstairs, again, we are dealing with some hallway space, a kitchen that doesn't have any windows, but Honestly, it's sometimes, I'm just gonna say this, it's quite freeing to not have to work around windows when placing down counters and cabinets. Would highly recommend, by the way. <laughs> Cause you know when counters or cabinets intersect with windows, I can't, I don't like it, I can't handle it. So sometimes it's just nice to have a room that doesn't actually have any windows and then you turn it into a kitchen and you can do whatever you want with the cabinets. It's great. Would highly prefer to have a dining room with windows more than a kitchen. But that's again just personal preference. In any house that is bigger than say a 30 by 20, you're always going to end up with some rooms that don't have windows. So it's basically up to you what you want to do with them. I see for this house, I decided to stick to a large living room but you could easily have turned this into two rooms instead. I guess I figured because this is a, uh, a family home for a rather big family, it's a generations as well so they have their uh, their grandparents living here, it would kind of make sense for them to have a big a big living room because there are a lot of sims. I think there are like seven or eight total actually. Yeah, eight total. So it makes sense for this household to just have a spacious even if there's not room for every single sim <laughs> on these two couches. It makes sense for them to have a spacious living room. There's a bit of like a, some toys over here as well. This is kind of making me want to build a farm. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of want to build a farm again. Oh no, we gotta, we gotta move on before I get the ideas. This house took so long to do. <laughs> so I believe this is actually a bit of an older build of mine. Quite clearly does not really fit into Henford on Bagley, but yeah, it's definitely an older build of mine. But I figured it would, uh, cause this is a 40 by 30 house as well, but it's actually a bit narrow if you look at it from above. And we also have a bit of a boxy kind of upstairs going on. Oh, and I remember, yes, the door is actually in an annoying spot. So the door is over to the right whereas the main part of the house is actually under this bit which meant that I could not place the staircase over here by the front door which is what I usually like to do so I've had to move it over here and that's because there is no way your sim like it will intersect with the walls it will uh, mess up with the roofing so I had to do something else for this for this floor plan, but still cut this off from uh, from the rest of the house because it just makes sense. We've still been following lines as well here and there. This was kind of like either this room was, was gonna turn into a very wide whatever. Some people would probably be okay with placing a living room in here, like delete this wall and then place a living room. I don't like having living rooms by the front door. That is, that's a Scandinavian thing. I don't like it, it sounds cold. So I've moved it somewhere else, but I could see some other people doing that. You could also have placed the kitchen over here if you're okay with walking straight into the kitchen. But I decided to, again, place a bathroom by the front door because your sims have pee needs, okay? That's just, that's the thing. <laughs> they too have bladders and will need to do their business when they get home from school. And then it's a question of, because I would rather the dining room is close to the door that leads to the back than the kitchen, sometimes at least. It depends a little bit. If there's a side door, I like to place the kitchen close to the side door for some reason. That just makes sense in my head. It's not something that I think about. It just works for some reason. But I also sometimes like it being the dining room that leads to the backyard. So I could have made this a little bit smaller and then placed the dining room right here. Maybe if we turned it like an open situation. But I think part of the reason I also placed the kitchen right here is because we have less wall space to place counters in this room because of the door, but also this 
taller window. So the kitchen is right here. It's quite small and compact, but it also works with the house. It's a cozy house. It's autumnal, so it's supposed to have cozy vibes. Something I also like to do with my floor plans and because I'm including door placement in floor plans, even though I, I'm not going to touch on it much in this video, is that if I'm using archways, I actually like when they line up with each other because it just it's harmonious, if that's the word. It adds harmony. It also gives a nice flow if your sim is walking through the house. So that that's another thing that I think about when I do floor plans, that archways actually are lined up with each other. It just looks nice. But as for the upstairs, I don't actually, because it's a while ago since I did this floor plan, so I don't remember the order that I did things in, but I'm pretty sure that I did at least this area of the house. So the right bit over here, which was very quickly done, just close off this little area so you have a... Uh, a bathroom by the front door and then also did parts of this area before I moved upstairs and then basically did everything around the staircase so like made sure that the doors are not too close to each other I don't like to add doors in the corners of the rooms either because it makes furnishing kind of awkward sometimes this was also, I think, before we actually could place doors on half tiles. So I've placed it there. Usually I would probably, or nowadays, I would probably place it there. Just like I would probably place this a little bit less in the corner, like this. Yeah, this situation over here was, is not my favorite to, uh, to furnish. I don't like when the, when the doors are in the corner of the room. <laughs> I don't like it one bit. But to avoid the doors also being too close to each other, which they would have been if I only had this like single tile landing up here, I've made it a little bit wider and that means the doors are a little bit further apart. That's mainly, it doesn't really cause issues in The Sims, but it's mainly like a... Uh, Thinking about floor planning in real life, I would hate if the doors are too close to each other because you could risk them bumping into each other. Imagine two people opening the doors at the same time, like that sort of situation. I want to avoid that even though it's not really causing issues in The Sims. But I'm all for like not building super realistic houses. I just guess there are certain things I can't let go of. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically what I can tell you guys about this floor plan and like what I thought about while doing it. This was definitely also like, how can we make sure that there's a nice flow leading from one door to the other? So it's basically just like open, but still closed off. We just have open archways. And um, I also, just as a note, always like to make sure that the living room, the dining room, and the kitchen are connected to each other in some way. So they're not spread out, especially the dining room and the kitchen. So they're not spread out throughout the house. But if I can, I want to make sure that the living room as well is connected to them. So, And then the last house, which is another Generations family home. It's another big house, but it's not a modern one. So it's a little bit different. Although I would say it has a modern touch to it. This was definitely a bit of a challenge to floor plan i think i think i must have said in the voiceover as well if i know myself correctly that this floor plan is probably a bit of a mess but <laughs> that's just how it is sometimes so we have actually a situation where they're not combined but there is a nice flow with the archways leading from one room to or the kitchen one of the common rooms to the bigger common room which is the living room over here i'm not usually or at least not anymore i don't like to place if I can avoid it at least, I like to uh, make sure that the laundry machines and stuff are in a closed off room because realistically thinking, they make a lot of noise. So that would be super annoying to listen to, especially if you're sitting in here in the living room watching something on the TV and like the laundry machine is just going off in the room next to you and there's only an archway in between. Yeah, that's annoying. So preferably these days I will put them in a closed off room instead or in just like uh, the garage as well. But I've placed them in one of the hallways right here. I think I must have thought this little space is too small for a powder room anyway. So we're gonna do something with it. Let's put the laundry machines there. It's fine. So you can see for the second floor here that I've made sure, this is another thing as well, you want to make sure if, uh, if you have like an okay spacious bigger upstairs that the uh, 
staircase is sort of in the middle of the room. That way you utilize more of the space by avoiding turning it into a hallway as well. Not that you should be afraid of hallways, but it's nice to be able to use the space for something a little bit more fun, if you get what I mean. So I've made sure here that the staircase could be in the middle of the upstairs so that I could get doors out to several rooms, make sure that we had a lot of bedrooms in this house. It's a rather big house. It's also, I went into this knowing that I wanted it to be a Generations family home, so I wanted there to be as many bedrooms as possible. So I've placed this down pretty early on and then just kind of built around the staircase essentially. That's why this, this bedroom right here is rather big, but it's also the parents' bedroom. They're the owners of the house, so it's okay for it to be big. You could also turn this into a living room if you'd rather do that because we do have two sliding doors over here. However, I do like, again, that sliding doors to the back porch are actually common rooms. So like kitchens or dining rooms or living rooms. So I chose this to be a living room over this space over here. And then all these like little bumps that you find here and there, do something with them, turn them into like, you could turn them into more hallway space if you want to, or, I prefer to turn them into bathrooms. Your sims can always use bathrooms, especially if they're a big family like this one. <laughs> sometimes I will turn them into laundry rooms, but I will also sometimes actually turn them into closet space. So the closets from Get Together, the walk-in ones, they're perfect for that purpose, but these all have windows on them, so you can't really do it then. So I've turned them into uh, bathrooms in this house, but it also makes sense because you have a bedroom right here with their own ensuite, a bedroom right here with their own ensuite. It's a little bit different on the second floor. I think, yeah, only the teen actually has an ensuite, so the others are sharing this one over here. But again, following the lines of the house without making the rooms too small or too big, that's a uh, personal interpretation, so that's completely up to you, but just essentially just cutting off where the walls of the exterior of the house are, are. Yes, are, not is. <laughs> Definitely in plural, walls in plural. But that is my main tip. If you're gonna take anything away from this video, it's that you need to follow the lines in the corners of the house because that is basically like your guide to making a floor plan. It's what I usually do when I floor plan. It just makes everything look a little bit more harmonious. Again, if that's even a word and will probably be my main tip. But yeah, if you got any other questions, let me know. I hope it was helpful. I feel like I just ranted it for 30 minutes, but got my thoughts out there. I hope you can use them for something. Again, though, if you do have any questions, please let me know and I will do my best to reply to you in text. If there are any other tutorials that you'd like to see from me, most definitely let me know. But that is all I got for you guys today. So I hope the video was at least a little bit helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, feel free to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. But that is all I got for you guys today. So I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye. Oh, you know, you know